Recently, I was reading Rocky Elmore's Out on Foot, Nightly Patrols, and Ghostly Tales of a U.S. Border Patrol Agent. In Chapter 15, Elmore detailed an agent named Luis Santiago, who on June 9, 1994, lost his life when he fell from a ridge. In the years following his death, reports began to come in from people crossing the border of being stopped by a strange man who not only identified himself as Agent Santiago, but who also matched the deceased agent's description. But how could this be? According to Elmore, sightings of this phantom officer became almost commonplace amongst those tracking the borderlands. Things would come to a head with a very mysterious death of one or more of these illegals. Elmore had to wonder if Santiago was somehow responsible. One of the rare instances of a ghost actually killing someone on record. Other tales of phantom officers pulling over cars and issuing tickets to weary drivers appear in the paranormal literature, although they remain rare and many dismiss them as nothing more than urban legends or stories told by the fireside during camping trips. One of the most interesting cases comes from the Fresno, California area on the notoriously haunted Freant Road. Numerous ghostly entities have been sighted on that road, but none as bizarre as the phantom police officer who roams the highway in the wee hours of the night. According to the site WeirdFresno.com, a man's father found himself on Freant Road late one evening. The road is mostly deserted, so the man was rushing along. Eventually, he spotted red and blue lights of a patrol car flashing behind him, so he pulled over. He waited for the officer to approach him. When he reached the window, the officer warned him about driving fast. He cited numerous accidents on that road before letting him off with a warning ticket. Uncertain as to what the ticket was actually for, he showed up at the police station the next day and asked the officer manning the desk what exactly the ticket was for. The officer was surprised and asked him where he got it from as they hadn't issued that type of ticket in years. The father proceeded to tell of his run-in with the officer on Freant Road. When the clerk looked it up, there was a look of shock on their face. Apparently the officer who had issued the ticket the previous night had died on Freant Road several years ago. Weird Fresno looked into the story and found out that indeed one officer had died on Freant Road, but it was in 2011 and he was off duty. A second officer, uh, the site discovered, had died in 2003, however it was not on Freight Road, but near Fowler. A similar story of a phantom cop issuing tickets happened in Minnesota on Lilydale Road. It was on uh, Friday, February 27, 2007. Two siblings driving along Lilydale at night looking to meet up with some friends for an evening of clubbing. Passengers spotted red and blue lights flashing behind them, but at a really far distance. The driver saw it too. According to the passenger, in about the time it took to blink, the police car had caught up with them somehow. Both siblings were worried that a ticket would mean their parents would revoke their driving privileges. The officer issued them a ticket and they went on their way. The next Friday, the brother took his paycheck and went down to pay the ticket. When they got to the front desk, the officer notified them that the ticket could not be paid with her. As the witness went to pull out their money, the officer began laughing. She informed them that the officer who gave them the ticket had been dead for a long time and that people often came in to pay off tickets that had been issued by this deceased officer. On Narrows Road in Kentucky, a police officer was accidentally struck and killed during a routine traffic stop. Even though this tragedy was said to have happened sometime in the 1950s, people who drive or park on that road will find themselves being pulled over by an officer driving a 50s era police car. The officer will walk up to the door of the car and before he is about to issue the ticket, he simply vanishes, much to the horror of the driver. The police car also vanishes. On December 22, 1978, two officers driving the only CHP car in their Northern California County that night did a stop on a car they believed to be stolen. The driver somehow managed to get control of the officer's weapons, shot one in the knee and one in the elbow, disabling them. He would later kill both officers with their own service revolvers. Around the time of the trial, the child of one of the deceased officer's friends 
a dispatcher and deputy for the sheriff's department where they lived in Northern California began having bizarre sightings in their home. The person, who at the time of the event was a child of about the age of three, claims that it started when they observed a strange man hanging around the bathroom. The child asked their mother to come with them to the bathroom to see the man who was there. Quote, so she went with me and she couldn't see anyone, but she asked me to describe the man. I told her the man was a policeman. She asked me what color his uniform was because she knew the colors worn by the different law enforcement agencies, sheriff's department, the local police, and highway patrol. I said the man's uniform was tan, which meant highway patrol. As we left the bathroom, I pointed into my bedroom and said, there's another one in there. I described how the men had been shooted with a shoot gun, one in the elbow and stomach, one in the knee, as well as other places I don't remember exactly where, unfortunately." Unquote. The mother had a fairly good idea of who the two officer her child was seeing were. And after a little investigation, it was revealed that indeed one officer had been shot in the elbow, although that specific detail had been withheld from the public as the police investigated the crime. The fact that this child cited these two officers around their home and what it meant defied explanation. Another person, a truck driver in California going southbound on I-5 north of Reading, also claims to have had a bizarre encounter with a phantom officer. He was driving a semi, going a little over the 55 mile per hour speed limit when they spotted some red and blue flashing lights in his trailer's rearview mirror. He pulled over. He waited, he guessed, upwards of 10 minutes for the officer to come to his door. He never did. The truck driver decided to step out of his truck and investigate. As he walked to the back of his trailer, he could see the lights of a cruiser, but oddly there was no car to go with it. I looked everywhere they could be coming from, but there was no car. When I got back to my truck, the lights stopped, the man wrote in his letter to Weird Fresno. Golden Gate Park in California is also said to have a phantom cop who roams the park at night searching for speeders. According to those speeders who have been pulled over and issued a ticket in the park, when they go to file it through the courts, they'll find out that the officer listed doesn't exist. In fact, he's been dead for over 10 years. There's even a warning issued amongst those unlucky enough to see these headlights in their rear view. If you're being trailed, you need to go outside of the park first before you pull over, and once you do, the ghost cop will disappear. Seemingly, this officer's soul is tethered to this park somehow. In Long Island, New York, on Sweet Hollow Road, witnesses claim to have been pulled over by an officer late at night. The cop comes up to the car, asks the driver a few questions, and then lets them go with a warning. As the cop turns around to go back to his car, the driver observes that the back of said officer's head has been blown out from a shotgun. It was said that an officer had died on Sweet Hollow Road, although LIP, a paranormal investigative group operating in the area, have not been able to find anything to corroborate that an officer had indeed been killed on that road. In North Dakota, a person traveling on Highway 2 near Rugby late at night, in a rush to get home to Minot, observed flashing police lights miles in their rearview mirror. Not wanting to risk a ticket, the driver slowed down to the speed limit. After a while, the lights disappeared, and the driver again sped up. Quote, Out of nowhere, the lights were right behind me, and I was irritated that I had been that careless to allow him to catch up with me without seeing him. I pulled over and got my driver's license out for the highway patrolman and waited for him to come to the window. When he didn't come, I checked out the rearview mirror, and I was sitting alone in the middle of the night on that lonely highway." Unquote. The driver nicknamed him the Ghost Cop of Rugby. In Indiana, a ghost of a police officer was said to haunt the home where he murdered his family. According to the story, a police officer living in Wolcottville returned home and proceeded to murder his wife, his children, and even the family dog. Not long after dialing 911 to inform them that he had killed his family, the distraught officer then took his own life. Years afterwards, the house was back on the market. A woman named Saranda moved in to the home with her dad and her stepmother. According to her, from an article on ghostofamerica.com, Come, Saranda would sometimes hear the faint sounds of a dog barking angrily at something inside the home, even though it wasn't her dogs. She brushed it off at first, but things only got stranger and stranger. Quote, I would see human-shaped shadows moving around and hear footsteps, and sometimes women screaming and gunshots going off. And during the night, I would be dragged from one side of my bedroom to another. I would feel hands on me when no one 
is even near me, unquote. An old jail in St. Petersburg, Florida is said to be a hot spot for the paranormal, including ghostly sightings of a prisoner who died in the jail named Dexter, as well as many other odd things. Tour guides also claim to see a shadowy shape of a tall man on the walls. Many believe that it is the first sheriff to work the jailhouse, a man named Sheriff Perry. Perry stood well over six foot five, a very tall man. In Rapid City, South Dakota, another former police officer is said to haunt an old three-story building in the downtown area. John Leary, who got the nickname Hooky Jack after he lost his arms and one of his eyes in an explosion and had his hands replaced by hooks, went on to become a Rapid City police officer. According to the Rapid City Journal, a local newspaper, he held that position for 41 years before he was struck and killed by a car in 1926, although some reports claim it was in 1916. Ever since, he has haunted this downtown building where he worked as a night watchman. His presence was so constant that the restaurant was actually named Hookie Jack's. Today it has been renamed the Sport Rock Tavern, but despite this name change, it is felt that Hookie Jack still roams the building. It is said that Leary had lived on the third floor of this building for several years and many members of the staff refused to go to that floor even during the day. Further, security cameras have picked up flashing lights while the building was empty. Pool balls, tables and chairs moved by themselves. Footsteps and a strange voice can be heard on some nights. Leary himself, or rather his apparition, has been seen by staff and customers walking around. Some of the locals think he is merely protecting the property. In Putnam County, New York, at the Boone Hutchison Cemetery, another ghostly officer is said to prowl the grounds at night looking for trespassers. Boone Hutchison Cemetery, or Boone Hutch, it is called by locals, sits atop a hillside off of South County Road 450 West. Known for being peaceful, the cemetery is said to become something altogether chilling when night falls. For those unlucky wanderers, a ghostly officer is said to appear as a bright blue light originating at the back of the cemetery. Other witnesses have claimed to see the officer clearly bathed in a blue glow or carrying an inexplicable blue light. Strangely enough, witnesses prowling that cemetery at night have also claimed to have encountered a pack of spectral dogs with glowing red eyes. These demonic hellhounds are said to chase out trespassers. Interestingly, the blue light is often associated with UFOs. Also interesting is, 1973, a pack of hellhounds was said to have emerged from a UFO that had landed in a cemetery, a story upon which I will delve in a later video. So what are we to conclude from all this? Could it be that the ghosts of deceased police officers are still out there haunting those areas they patrolled in life? drifting into our world and theirs, keeping an eye on things from the other side. Next time you find yourself alone on a country back road and you see the blue and red lights in your rearview mirror, pull over, be courteous, and make sure to get that ticket checked out because there's a chance that it might have been issued from somewhere between this life and the next.